everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about the ramifications of the booktube effect. And this comes from the other day I did the Goodreads effect and I got some interesting comments and I got some even more detailed emails that really shed some light on some things. And because, as you all know, there was a bit of the drama over the last couple weeks. And in doing so, I learned a lot. I even did a live stream called The Things I Learned over all of this stuff. And um, there was actually so much stuff that I learned. And um, this topic that we're going to be talking about right now, I haven't even gotten into yet. So... I wanted to share a little bit about all of this um, along with it because it actually goes into what the hell we're talking about. So, out of all the people who I talked to about the booktube effect, the biggest problem that I heard from people was the idea of like keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. To be fair, I don't know if anyone used that term. I don't think they did. Actually, that's not true. One person did actually use that term. But it's legit. People see people doing book hauls all the time. Um, people see people buying new books. And then there comes this whole thing where it's like, well, I can't afford to buy all these new books, but I'll get them at the library. And then it's like, is, are people like looking down on me at me for using the library? Um, and all this other trash. And this goes back to this argument about our book hauls bad for people's self-esteem and shit. This comes up all the time. And for those of you who haven't been in this little community here for a while, um, I've been here like six or seven years. And um, this comes up at least once a year. If not more than that. Um, so that is a real thing. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because all of the things I'm going to be hitting here are reasons why people leave are reasons why people stop their channel and it's all legit stuff. And if we're going to sit here and, um, kind of lie to ourselves that this is all about community, then why are so many people leaving over these things and we'll get to some other stuff that will kind of hit it home in a little bit here but the other thing is FOMO fear of missing out guys yeah it's legit there are people who don't want to necessarily read every new book that comes out but feels like if they don't they're going to miss out on conversations and exciting things that happen in the booktube world. Um, or if it's like books that are nominated for the Man Booker or um, the Pulitzer or anything like that. People feel like if they don't read those, they aren't going to be able to participate. Same thing with um, read-alongs and, like, monthly things. Now, I'm not saying people shouldn't do these things, but I'm illustrating that these things are reasons why people walk off. Now, my advice to people about keeping up with the Joneses and FOMO being real and all this shit is it's none of these things are as important as you're making them seem in your head. And I'm not trying to be, like, shitty about this. But, like, you can read books whenever. And I know you're like, but, like, people are talking about it now. Well, join that conversation as best you can. And do the best you can do on other stuff. You don't need to do the exact same videos that everybody else is doing. You don't need to be reading the exact same books that everybody else is reading. I know it seems like that, but you don't have to. And when you're doing, especially when like the big read along things happen, like some of them are a little easier, like um, March of the Mammoths or Nonfiction November. 
because anyone could like look through their stuff and go, oh, I have things for this. Or you could go to the library and go, oh, I have things for this. But like when it's like specific read-alongs, um, I know those feel like if you can't participate that like you're totally missing out and like you might be missing out on a conversation but that conversation will come up a thousand other times and on top of that there will always be another read-along or read-a-thon or whatever that you could jump onto that actually fits the stuff that you have you know what i'm saying like you don't have to do every single read-along another thing that um i here is that people don't read fast enough they judge themselves on a tier of people who read really really fast who could read a million books in a day obviously that's not true but you know what i'm saying and what i want to get to with that is that read as fast as you can read because if you're not enjoying the book you're reading you're not going to enjoy doing the video that you're going to make about that book. If you don't enjoy doing the video you're making, you're going to not enjoy being a part of the booktube community. So, like, you have to treat yourself well. Like, you are the most important person in your life as far as the booktube community goes. So you need to do you and do you how you need to be done, if that makes any sense to you. Like, all of this other shit, no one is the same. Like, we are all completely different. There is not two individuals on BookTube that are exactly the same. So you don't need to worry about that. Everybody reads at different paces. And sometimes you will read faster than other days. You will have more time. You will have more energy to be able to sit down and read a shit ton more than you will on a, any other day. But that doesn't mean that that's what it has to be like every day. So don't, like, worry about that. Um, another thing, this actually came up, and this was something that I was shocked by. People not wanting to do a bad review of a popular book. So let's say you did get that book that everyone's raving about and everyone's talking about. You sit down and you read this book, and you're like, oh my god, this book is hot trash. How do I make a video about this and still have everyone like me? Now, some of you might hear me saying these things and go, this sounds stupid. Nobody does that. So many people said to me that they do this and they read all these books and they never do videos about them because they don't want to offend other booktubers that like them. I don't understand why we live in this booktube community where everyone's afraid of hurting everyone's feelings it's it's a book it's just art we're allowed to like different things i like books that 98 percent of you wouldn't f with your neighbor's d if that makes any sense to you do you guys see what i'm saying like this is like a legit concern that people have i don't understand it but it's legit so what I'm going to say is if you have read a book that you didn't like and you're afraid of what people are going to say about that, do it in the night, not the nicest, but just like the most respectful way possible and say why you didn't like the book. And I guarantee more people will come to your channel because you're being fucking honest and they will be able to see that honesty and they will be able to go, wow, that's an unpopular opinion. Why do you think those tags are still a thing? Unpopular opinion about... <laughs> because when people have unpopular opinions about stuff, more people sub to you, more people follow you because you're saying something different than what every other fucking person on goddamn fucking YouTube is saying. Do you see what I'm, where I'm getting at here? Another thing is not knowing what content to make. And this is a bit weird because BookTube... The booktube community has so many like daily and weekly and monthly things that you can make videos on as prompts. So like you have Tag Tuesday, you have Friday Reads, you have weekly wrap ups, you have TBRs, you have monthly wrap ups, um, you have, I don't know, I'm sure there's more uh, like 
you have book hauls, you have reviews. There are so many things that you can do videos on that the fact that there are some people who still don't know what to do a video about, to me, when you're saying that, you're saying that because you're burnt out. Like, you know a bunch of things you can make videos about. But if you're not digging it, like knowing, oh, it's Friday, I can do a Friday reads, but ugh, you're, you're burnt out. You're not going to want to do that. So you have to go back to why you started doing this in the first place. Like what made you want to have a book channel and talk about books and all that other stuff? What got you excited about doing that? And this is kind of like a challenge I'm going to give to a lot of people. If there is like your favorite book and you love that book so much and when you first started BookTube, like you did a video about it and you gushed about it and the whole thing... And it's been a bit and you're in this rut and you don't know what to do. Go back and do a redo of that book. Like do a different video about it. Instead of doing a review, do a chapter by chapter review. Um, instead of doing a review, talk about all the history. Because most people who have a favorite book know a lot about the author and know a lot about the time that that book was written. So do a video talking about all the great things surrounding that book, you know? And if that's what you have to do to, like, get yourself energized and back into it, then do that. And that's awesome. You could kill that. Another thing that I know is very um, soul-crushing, let's say, is people come on to booktube and they're like oh my gosh this is gonna be so cool i'm gonna meet all these people all these people who like read and i'll be able to talk to people who like the same kind of books as i do and then they start their channel and they get like 50 subs 60 subs and then nothing and like a month goes by and they might get up to like 80 and then like six months go by and you're at 82 and you're like, fuck. And so then the frequency doesn't happen as much of you putting videos out. Because, like, you, like, expected so much more out of the community and out of everything. And so that makes you all disheartened. And then you end up, like, leaving or just not really participating. Now, this is just me here. Okay? This is me. I have no evidence of this other than common sense. So what I recommend people do, a lot of times when people come to BookTube, they come to BookTube and the first thing they do is the BookTube newbie tag, which is a great way for people to get to know you. And it's also a great way for people to find you because like I did that video talking about like the BookTube newbie tag and people searching it and a bunch of people have told me that they have. And then someone told me a story where they used to do that and give shout outs and then they found out a bunch of the people they were shouting out after a couple months of them being on booktube were racist and bigots and sexist and all this other stuff and so they don't do that anymore i completely understand that and that is a valid reason why you wouldn't want to do that anymore and maybe that's why that one dude i was talking about boned out but here is my challenge to you if you want to start a booktube channel um, and even this goes out to people who maybe have under a hundred subs and have been around for a while and you're just not getting the traction that you used to get or the traction, you're not getting the traction that you hoped. So this is what I say to do. I think the reason why that is, is because most people, when they start doing this, have a really hard time connecting with the camera connecting with the audience, connecting with the viewers. It, it's kind of a awkward, difficult thing. And I know a lot of people have a hard time with technology. Like they didn't like grow up going, Oh God, I can't wait till I'm old enough to be able to be a booktuber. It's usually something that just kind of happens one day because you see a video and you're like, I could fucking do that. I have a better take than that schmuck. And then you're like, I could do this. And then you sit down in front of the camera and you're like, um, hi. And like the fans going, the air conditioner's on, all sorts of shit. And you're like, I just wanted to talk to you about this book. 
and it's like the super awkward thing. So what I recommend you do is do like, and if it takes you a couple months to do this, fine, but do like 10 videos before you do the booktube newbie tag. Like get your feet wet, get comfortable, just start talking to the camera like you're talking to your best friend. Um, and for those of you who are younger, talk to the camera like you're on a Discord server and you're like balls deep in Minecraft, okay? Like just like just be as natural as you can, you know? It's like we're just chatting it up here. We're just a couple of homies talking the schmack. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if you could come across that way and you come across friendly and come across natural and, like, you're not putting on a show and you're just being real, people gravitate towards that. And I'm going to give you the perfect example. I started this channel a long-ass time ago, whatever. The thing I hear from people more than any other thing. And this should have told me something a long time ago. And it took me a while to really have this sink in. People say to me, I would never read the books you read, but you are entertaining to watch. And that's perfect. You know, like, hopefully I could, like, show someone a book that they had never heard of before and will want to read it. But this just goes to show you that you don't need to be reading the books that everybody else is reading to get attention. You know, you don't have to be doing, you don't have to be keeping up with the Joneses. You don't have to, like, have the FOMO problem happen. Just be yourself and talk about the stuff you like. And if you can come across as a very, like, open, like, real individual, that goes a long way. Like, a long way. Do what you want, do the videos that you want. And that's another thing too. Like if you want to do mainly book content and then one day do a video of um, grocery shopping or you making um, asparagus or you at the DMV getting mad as one would do, do that. Like people say all the time, like this is a booktube channel, so only make book content. Dude, like we're just people here. Yes, the majority of the stuff I do on this channel is book related, but that's not all I do. I do all sorts of other stuff. We are all complex individuals. And if people are coming to your content because they enjoy you, they're going to enjoy the other things you do. So don't get terrified if like people are like um, not connecting with the other stuff as much. That stuff all will come as things go. And so, so back to that booktube newbie tag, um, before I forget, if you, if it's been like six months since you did the newbie tag, do it again, do it from scratch. You could have all the same answers if you want, but probably the answers are going to be a little bit different now and do that and put that up. So then now it's back in the algorithm and you know, all of that noise. And so you'll get more eyeballs on your channel. Um, the other thing, too, about what I was just saying, when you look at your dashboard and you go, okay, this video got um, 20 views, this video got four views, and it's only been a couple days. That's an interesting bit of information to look at. So what that would tell me is that your actual subscribers enjoyed video A as opposed to video B. But if, like, you go back and look two weeks later, there's a good possibility that video B has completely outperformed video A, okay? And if that's the case, then probably you're getting more views from non-subscribers. And if you see substantial subscriber growth over that period of time, you could then realize, oh, this video over here, like, maybe I should do more stuff like this. And for all of you cynical fucks out there who are getting angry that I'm, like, gaming the system, this isn't gaming the system. This is, like, basic YouTube. This is, like, none of this stuff is, like, I'm, like, entering cheat codes into a game, okay? This is just, like, how YouTube works. And if you want to be a part of YouTube and want your channel to grow and you want to meet people and you want to talk to more people, 
then you need to play by the rules that's set up. That's not gaming the system. That's reading the instructions. Ugh, people, dude. Another thing that happens, and this is me talking to the people with bigger channels, and I'm going to probably say like 5,000 subs and up, okay? Be kind to people with small channels. Like, if somebody has a small channel and you don't like their take or um, you want to tongue-in-cheek poke fun at them for their take on something, I guess do it if you want to do it, but you're being a dick. Like, if you have more subs than someone who has less subs, obviously, and you talk shit, that's completely punching down. And somebody who is trying to grow their channel, seeing someone with a bigger channel talking shit on them, they're going to probably feel bad about that. And that's the kind of shit that makes people fucking leave BookTube and, like, go back to just being a commenter, okay? Honestly, like, most of the people in this community are introverted people and are kind of socially awkward and don't like confrontation, so when confrontation comes up, no matter how tongue-in-cheek it's done, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings. And if you care about community the way you say you care about community, you should fucking care if you're hurting someone's feelings. Okay? Because if you don't care and you're like, oh, I'm just teasing, I'm just being silly, then you really don't give a shit about community. You care about having an audience giggle when you tell a joke. And that's a comedian. So um, you better hope to God you're funny as shit if you are coming on BookTube to practice your comedy skills. So anyway, so that is my um, BookTube uh, effect video. So hopefully if you are someone who... Um, has been discouraged lately, this is something that'll build you back up. And um, a lot of this advice, I think, is some fucking golden shit. So keep this in your back pocket. Um, and now I want to challenge everyone. And how I want to do this is this. We have, like, Shorty September coming up next month or whatever, right? It is a read-a long a -thon. I am really hoping that some people out here, out there, out here, will pick one short story and do as many videos as they can on that short story. I'm actually going to be doing that. Um, the members of my channel here are right now coming up with short stories that they would like me to do this with, and then we're gonna put a poll together and then everyone will have to vote on what story. And whatever story wins will be the first story that I do this with. I might do like the second place, third place or whatever like that too throughout the next couple months. But I'm going to be doing a video like on the author of this short story, the period in which it was written, the area in which it was written, the actual story itself, and then the context of the story any deeper meaning, um, any discussion that the story um, causes, things like that. I'm gonna be doing multiple videos on just one story. So this is a really good way to give yourself content for an entire month. And you, it's not gonna break the bank. It's not, like you could find, I'm sure you have a short story in your house somewhere, if you have read a book before. There's probably something somewhere. And if not, there's tons of stuff free online. Project Gutenberg. Hello. Um, so find something and try to come up with as many different video ideas as you can. And if you're going to do this, leave it in the comments and leave what ideas you have for what you can do with those videos. Because I would love more ideas. I think this is a great way to keep us talking about books without us having to like feel like we need to keep up with the joneses you know what i'm saying so with that said um i'll see you guys in the comments and i will talk to you later Bye bye I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.